With us now is a former Justice Department official, Gene Rossi, on this. Uh, Gene, I thought the Beto O'Rourke leap was just that, a, a huge leap, but what did you think? It's a classic getting over your skis, the tips of your skis. And, and you, you brought up a good point, Neil. Uh, Republicans and Democrats should not get over the tips of their skis either way. We don't know what is in this report. It's, it's a war and peace, a lot of pages. Uh, we don't know if there are uh, exoneration of individuals, including the president, or this is a possibility. When I was a federal prosecutor, I used to write prosecution memos to decline cases. And in those memos, I would put the good and the bad, uh, the positive and the negative. And we don't know if that report, if Mueller came close to charging somebody or that person was completely exonerated. We have to wait. So both sides should be very cautious and not, should not be spiking the football. And to go with that football analogy, I think we are at the end of the first half. And the third and fourth quarter are going to involve two forces. One is Congress. We all know what could possibly happen there with the investigative committees. But the other force in the second uh, half of this football game, if you will, this very serious one, is you have the Southern District, the Eastern District of Virginia, New York, the uh, New York Attorney General, the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, and Maine Justice, uh, who have received handoff, if, if you will, from Robert Mueller, right. who I got, I got to say this, Neil, the, the biggest star in this whole scenario is Robert Mueller. In 22 months, he didn't go after anybody. He went after the truth. He was an umpire in a baseball game, to mix metaphors. <laughs> and we got to compliment him because he didn't drag this out. He did what he had to do, and he didn't leak. Yeah, that, that is remarkable. But to your point, too, at the outset there, that, that it has led to these splintered investigations that uh, have morphed from Russian collusion to just business dealings, even charitable foundation activity, uh, who was funding what at the president's inauguration. I mean, it veered wildly, of course, and maybe wisely. Uh, Bob Mueller thought, hand this off for other investigations. But did that create a mess here that could, you know, obviously dominate the headlines over these next couple of years? Yes, it did create a mess, but, but it's a mess that if you're a prosecutor, if you were, and I worked for the Department of Justice for almost 30 years, and you are handed off the football, if you will, and there's potential crimes, you have a duty to investigate, to dig deep, to find out, is there enough there to charge? It doesn't mean you are going to charge, but you have a duty. If you have a reasonable basis to think that a crime has been committed, a prosecutor has to investigate because the rule of law is paramount and no one is above the law. Now, if I were President Trump, I probably would be golfing, too, because <laughs> there is some good news in this report filing. No indictments have been filed that we know of. No indictments have been brought. And that is good news for the president. I mean, the Democrats are disappointed, but I'm happy because... Robert Mueller is a class act. I'm a big fan of his. And if he says there's no there there for the Russian conspiracy, the Russian collusion, there may be a lot of red flags and loud gongs, but there's nothing to prosecute. I'm at peace with that. Now, the other people that have gotten the football, if you will, the Southern District of New York, I think that jurisdiction, that office is the biggest problem for the president because I've sat across the table from the four prosecutors in the Southern District on another matter that I can't talk about. And I can tell you this, those prosecutors are tough, they are brilliant, and they are relentless. And if I were the president, I wouldn't be golfing tomorrow, maybe today. Uh, okay. Uh, Dean Rossi, thank you. And they have a wider purview, uh, to put it mildly. Always good talking to the former federal prosecutor. Uh, and to uh, Gene's point here, just letting you know, we're getting word from our own Ed Henry um, that the Attorney General Bill Maher is moving to get something out on this and some bullet points, principal findings out to the public as early as tonight. Former Whitewater Independent Counsel and author of Contempt, a memoir of the Clinton uh, investigation, Ken Starr. Ken, very good to have you. Thanks for taking the time.
Hey, thank you, Neil. You know, back in 1998, uh, you had a, what, about a 445-page report. We're told that this one was very voluminous. They didn't give a page count to it, but I'm betting it was more pages than yours. I don't know. Does that mean anything? <laughs> Yeah, it really doesn't mean anything because, by the way, Bill Barr, who has this report, is going by the books. When you read his letter transmittal to Congress and then he made it public, Neil, there are four different re references to the regulations under which Bob Mueller has been operating. So everybody needs to remember, Bill Barr is a lawyer and he looks at the law. Everybody says, well, we want complete transparency. He's got discretion to do that. But thus far, he's a go by the books guy. And he's, what he said is principal conclusions, he's going to share those. And then he's going to consult separately with both Rod Rosenstein and then with Bob Mueller to see what other information. I'd say Bill Barr is doing it exactly right. All right. So. Uh, the fact that there are no additional indictments, many have read into that, well, uh, the great line, it's a nothing burger. I always found that to be a weird phrase because <laughs> even with nothing yeah. on it, the burger is compelling. But having said that, <laughs> what do you make uh, of that and that that means that there's no, nothing new here, nothing, anything that the president need to worry about here? What do you think? Right. And of course, we don't know. But uh, as uh, you and I have discussed this before, there have been contraindications all the way through that there was no collusion. Now, what the country was led to understand is there's a serious question. Was there collusion between the Trump campaign and Russian interests? And so now we have at least no indictments, right? We'll see where there was there information and the like. But there's one really key thing that it seems to me people should feel very good about. Uh, they should. Whether they will or not is their business. One, no indictable offenses uh, with respect to any alleged collusion. But secondly, this investigation was allowed to run. There is no interference. That's one of the key things that uh, Bill Barr made clear. So throughout the tenure, remember all the furor about Matt Whitaker as the acting right. attorney general. Oh, he's going to put a damper on. None of that came true. So the process has been run with integrity, which is what the American people should, uh, should hope for and, frankly, they should expect. But was there a leak of the no indictment news, no additional indictments? Was that a leak? Well, it may be, uh, but we don't know where that came from. Right. But, but the, the no indictments, if, it, it, to me, that's a natural inference, uh, Neil, just to be drawn from the fact that uh, Bob Mueller says, I'm through. Now, anything can happen, right? That is something that has been referred back to the Justice Department that didn't require the extraordinary service of a special counsel. Uh, but uh, again, this is a one of those wait and, wait and see moments. But I think it is a time for the nation. I'm leaving politics aside. Others can talk about that. The nation to be thankful that there was no uh, evidence that we know of of collusion, which I think has been the case all the way along, no public evidence of collusion. And secondly, that this process has been run with in integrity. Uh, and so it, we should all just say, thank goodness, this is a rule of law country as opposed to a Vladimir Putin Russia or a Maduro Venezuela. You know what's interesting, too, about 37 indictments and or guilty pleas over the span of two years. Um, when all was said and done, most of those were on lying or misrepresenting yourself, whether it was Michael Flynn or Paul Manafort or Roger Stone. But a lot of lawyers have pointed out to me, Ken, that no one was charged with directly conspiring with the Russians to help Donald Trump get elected president. Um, and the indictments did not accuse any Americans of conspiring with Russia, period. Was, so what do we think Thank you. That? Thank you. We're to make of it that the suggestion that there was collusion was, from everything that we've seen, utterly unmeritorious. It just was without foundation. So let's say close the chapter on that. Let's deal with Russia. The real threat is not was there collusion. There wasn't no public evidence of any collusion whatsoever. But the Russian interests are indeed a threat, as we've seen in the two indictments. And I've praised those indictments before that Bob Mueller's team returned against the Russian individuals and the Russian uh, organizations. They're thugs. They're trying to interfere with our elections. Let's bring them to justice and say, Bob Mueller, good job. Uh, adios.
Well, we tried to bring these dozen or so Russian nationals to justice. Of course, Russia isn't going to hand them over to us, so we're going to make, make much progress there. But I'm curious about, and maybe this is the pro forma part of it that you can educate me on. When you released your report on Bill Clinton, did you have any recommendations uh, that, that would go to the House and say, all right, this is something you can seize on the, the lying about Monica Lewinsky th stuff or whatever? Or did you just lay it yeah, out we, there and then they would seize on what they thought to be an impeachable or high crime and misdemeanor offense? Yeah, well, we said don't release it. We said this uh, report, which was released without having been reviewed, uh, it has very sensitive material in it. So my transmittal letter could not be clearer. Watch out. And I think everyone knew the nature of the investigation was such into perjury and obstruction of justice, but given the background, that it was likely to contain details that you, you wanted to be cautious about, you wanted to be prudent about it. But the House of Representatives voted. They're the people's house. Everybody loves transparency, so boom, it just goes out. But no, I was very chagrined by that, and I was frankly surprised because Congress does, in fact, deal in a very professional way with sensitive material all the time. But they seized on that public. and felt that, you know, if you lie under oath, that, that's an impeachable offense. It might be people have different ways of interpreting already lied, understandably, about an affair. Uh, but be that as it may, they seized on that to begin impeachment operations. So I'm wondering here, those who have jumped to conclusions or thought that the Democrats might not be able to fest something out of this, how does that process go? Yeah, well, the process will, they'll be looking, uh, the, the political opponents will look for anything uh, to uh, hammer the president uh, with. So that's one of the reasons for the call of transparency, the three o'clock call. Right. What are we going to do now? Bob Mueller has, I guess, let us down or whatever because he did not conclude as the feverish suggestions were that there was collusion, which I viewed as fanciful, certainly unlikely uh, to begin with. So they're going to be trying to find anything that they possibly can. But again, my point is, uh, and by the way, I've got to correct one thing. What the President of the United States, Bill Clinton, was guilty of was included obstruction of justice, and that's why he was found in contempt by Susan Weber Wright. One of the things that is so different about this, Neil, is we've had the President continually attacking the investigation, but not interfering with it. Bill Clinton was subtle. <laughs> he let others, surrogates, James Carvel, right. Sidney Blumenthal, attack the investigation incessantly and to put private investigators on our private lives. The Clinton White House played for keeps. It looks as if Donald Trump's uh, bark is a lot worse than his bite. Do you think uh, Donald Trump has asked for a copy of this report and is that legal for, for Bill Barr to give it to him? I doubt that he's asked. I'm sure his lawyers have said we would like to see it. Uh, Bill Barr is so prudent that I think he will provide <clears throat> the president's lawyers only, if anything, okay. with that which they need to know that might affect national security. Ken Starr, thank, if you. Anything. thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate it. You bet, Neil. Ken Starr, the former uh, Whitewater Independent uh, Counsel. Uh the Robert Mueller investigation is over. All of us now trying to figure out what comes next, who better to talk to than the House Minority Whip, Congressman Steve Scalise, Republican of Louisiana. Good morning, sir. Good morning to y'all. What do you see as the next steps? Uh, number one, do you see this as a vindication of the president? And number two, when Democrats say make the report public, how much of it do you want the public to see? Well, I want to see all of it that is allowed by law to see. Obviously, there are some things that if they're classified, they're not going to be included in there. But ultimately, I think if you look at where this is and how long it's taken us to get here, we did our own investigations in the House when we were in the majority, and we found no collusion. Uh, you go back two years ago, and you know Adam Schiff and other people were saying they had strong evidence that there was collusion. Okay, if this report turns out to be what we're hearing, uh, that there are no new indictments and that there was no collusion, then are they going to come clean and say they were wrong, either they had bad information, maybe they were trying to mislead people because they wanted an outcome, which is my biggest concern with the FBI. I think there were some people over there that wanted this outcome, they wanted a bad outcome uh, and didn't get it. Uh, who's going to be held accountable? How many tens of millions of taxpayer dollars were spent 
uh, meandering around on what many have called a witch hunt. I think that ought to be part of the report. Uh, so clearly, if there's no uh, if there's no collusion that was found, then it strongly vindicates President Trump. But it raises those serious questions about who's going to be held accountable at the FBI, the bad actors that had a political agenda, which goes against everything that law enforcement is supposed to be about. But Congressman, it doesn't seem like the investigations are going to end in the House. Democrats are now in control of all these committees. They've, they've they already issued subpoenas to 80 plus Trump affiliated people or organizations. What is your response now, though, to Adam Schiff, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, threatening to subpoena Bob Mueller to come talk about what's in this new report? First of all, I think people are tired of this constant harassment of the president. Uh, that's not why they elected uh, the de Democrat majority. They didn't run saying that they were going to impeach the president, but now they're moving towards impeachment, whether the facts lead us there or not. Uh, the whole idea of an investigation should be about finding facts and let the facts lead you where they are. Uh, with many Democrats right now in this, in this Pelosi majority, uh, they want impeachment as the end result, regardless of the facts. That's the opposite of the direction you're supposed to go. If, again, this report comes out and says there are no new indictments and there are, there is no collusion, uh, they ought to drop this hoax and go <clears throat> focus on the things that matter to the American people, well, to, getting the economy moving again. To that point, how many of your constituents, Republicans or Democrats, are just chomping at the bit to see what Bob Mueller has to say. I mean, how much is this really resonating with people? They see through that it's been a partisan uh, attack on this president from the beginning. So the, Washington will be a buzz about this report. But regular folks who want their lives to improve, does this change anything? I think a lot of regular folks have been frustrated saying, what is all this talk? You know, you turn on some stations every day, uh, and all they talk about is Russia and collusion. Uh, are they going to acknowledge that they were wrong and that they were maybe trying to push their own political agenda uh, instead of just delivering the news? That's really what it's supposed to be about. I think people are tired of the personal attacks. Mm -hmm. And part of it is just people that want to go after the president and his family, regardless of what's out there, because they just didn't like the outcome of an election. Yeah. All right. Well said. Steve Scalise, thank you so thank much you, for your time this morning. Thank you. Always appreciate it. Always great to be with y'all. Go Tigers. Yeah, go Tigers. <laughs> I thought you might get that in. <laughs> thank you.